Black Ops Cold War has hit hard. It set a new record for the highest first day digital sales and people are combing through it fast. But what have you maybe not seen yet? Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 10 Easter Eggs and Secrets from Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Starting off at number 10, it's the Disco Zombie Funeral. Let's start with probably the funniest and weirdest Easter egg you're gonna find in this game. Zombie mode is of course famous for its insanely complex Easter eggs, so we're not gonna get into the new one in this game. These things are barely Easter eggs at this point, but completing them is pretty much the whole point of zombies mode for diehard fans at least. So let's talk about whatever this is. In the map, Die Machine, if you go into the room where the Pack-A-Punch appears, called the Particle Accelerator, you find five glowing lights that if you shoot, some pretty weird stuff goes down. And yes, I'm aware that that sentence sounds insane. It's zombies mode, just go with it. These things are pretty well hidden and they only appear after you built the Pack-A-Punch, but thankfully they always appear in the same locations. So what happens is the dance floor appears as the lights go nuts and a bunch of zombies break out into a spontaneous dance. No, it is not Thriller, however, that would have been a great opportunity and they missed it. The centerpiece of the whole thing is these zombies dancing while hauling around a crate. I mean, it's bizarre, I, I, I don't know. You might recognize these moves as being similar to the internet Ghana dancing pallbearers, which do pretty much exactly what you're seeing. Why they're referencing this on the zombies map? I don't know. I'd have gone with Thriller, like I said, obviously. Doesn't mean I'd hate the Ghana pallbearer, guys. That's fun, too. I mean, the whole thing's pretty funny, but the best part is after the little dance is over, they just leave behind the crate that's filled with salvage, like a free juggernaut perk that makes so you can take more hits and sometimes even a wonder weapon, which is not bad. It's a lot of nice stuff that helps you survive longer in zombies for not a lot of work and, yeah, everything that happens during the course of this. And number nine is the secret grenade launcher, and I feel like we're gonna say this a lot, but this is another weird one. In the campaign mission, Red Light, Green Light, you infiltrate a secret Soviet facility where they're conducting, like, I guess, fire drills in a simulated American town. I doubt the presence of the Burger Town restaurant is lost on anyone. Uh, the section in Modern Warfare 2 where you fight off a Russian invasion in the United States on the roof of a Burger Town is actually one of the most memorable moments from that game. But it is more than just a callback. Near the drive-thru, you can find the Burger Town boy, and he's got a button on him. Press it, and he'll make a snide comment about how fat Americans are, and... Would you like extra cholesterol with that? It's not just the one thing. He's also got a lot of other lines, for whatever reason. Like, I guess the Russian city builders went above and beyond on this little guy. Press the button enough, and... I'm just gonna say it, there's no explaining it, an M79 grenade launcher comes out of his rear end. It only has four shots in it, so its utility is a bit limited, but a grenade launcher is a grenade launcher. What else is there to say? Number eight, a surprise guest. The first thing that happens in the KGB mission is you're called up to meet the council with Gorbachev at the head of the table, but there's another guy beside him that might look a little familiar if you have played Modern Warfare, Zakhaev. Yeah, the bad guy from Call of Duty Modern Warfare. The original one. Another game in which a rogue Russian spy tries to nuke the world. The fact that he's in this game is pretty wild, as the Modern Warfare series and the Black Ops series of Call of Duty were always assumed to be in different universes, but this seems to imply that they are the same universe. Or at least that they're in universes that are closer to each other than originally thought. There's actually another pretty important dude here too, Kravchenko, one of the targets Mason was supposed to assassinate in the original Black Ops and didn't actually get around to it until Black Ops 2. The past events of Black Ops 2, not the future parts, take place later in the 80s, so his appearance here still makes sense. With Zakhaev, though, it's probably just meant to be a callback to a well-known character, not something we should take super seriously, but it's a surprise either way. And even better, you can choke him out in the elevator if you really want. At number seven, the 80s arcade, which after sneaking into the secret Soviet training ground, the first thing you see in the mission, red light, green light, is this fully decked out 80s arcade. You might just walk right through it to your objective, but if you stop and look around for a second, uh, you'll find a lot of the games are actually playable. Remember, this stuff is set in the early 80s, so it's pretty primitive, but there's noteworthy stuff from Activision's back catalog, like Pitfall, River Raid, Grand Prix, and Fishing Derby. <laughs> like a competitive fishing game. I'm gonna be honest, I've played all the others, but I've never played Fishing Derby. 
Also, I'm old. This isn't the only place you can find an arcade in the campaign. You'll find one in the safe house along with a computer that has its own selection of old games to play, but the fake 80s arcade in this mission is the most fully featured. At first, it seems like the guy with you, Woods, is going to tell you to hurry up, like what you would usually get when you stop and look around in any Call of Duty campaign, but he'll start to do stuff like make fun of you for playing poorly or say that there's no future in this video game stuff. At number six is Cartel Easter Eggs. On the map Cartel, there are a few secret notes and details around it that connect this map to a character from one of the previous Black Ops games. Probably the most obvious is this house, which seems to be directly connected to the main antagonist of Black Ops 2, Raul Menendez. There's pictures of him and his sister inside, as well as some newspapers and notes that give us a little added backstory. Another really strange detail is that the map is set exactly the same date as the mission in Black Ops 2 when you play as Raul Menendez and his sister is killed. The newspaper mentions someone named Jose Luis Menendez, who is apparently Raul's dad. Jose actually also appeared in the PS Vita game Call of Duty Declassified, but the only thing that matters is that he's the Black Ops 2 bad guy's dad. The weirdest thing is that there's a corpse in here who has a really similar face to the pictures of Jose in the newspaper. Something clearly went down here, and the note gives you a couple of clues about what it might be. Did Perseus have a falling out with the Menendez cartel? Is there some connection with Iran-Contra going on here? Um, I don't know, but if you're big on Black Ops, it's interesting. At number five is Nuketown references on the map Cartel. There is actually another Easter egg, one referencing maybe the most famous Black Ops map, Nuketown. You can find a photo showing a familiar house near the main hangar in the map. This was the first Nuketown reference players found. There's actually a second one in the multiplayer map, Satellite. There's even some coordinates on a point being located in Nevada, which lines up being the possible original Nuketown map remade. Of course, now we know that's exactly what it is. The roadmap revealed before Cold War's release shows that they're adding the map Nuketown 84 to the game, which looks like a total remake of the original. Nice. At number four is the numbers, Mason. There's a pretty big callback hidden in the campaign mission, Echoes of a Cold War. And it's not particularly subtle, as the entire mission is basically one big callback to a mission from the first game, but it's interesting nonetheless. In this mission, Mason and Woods return to Yamatu, the Soviet Area 51 that was attacked near the end of the first Black Ops. In it, you can find a locker that needs a key. Inside is a unique weapon called the Redeemer and a picture. If you play the original Black Ops, you might recognize the guy in the picture, that is Steiner, the Nazi scientist and creator of Nova 6, who Mason is brainwashed into killing. To add to that, you even get a little flash of the numbers that would appear when the mind control stuff was going on. At number three is the safe house padlock. So there is a little secret in the safe house. We talked about this a little bit in the previous video in the game, but this whole thing is kind of a big reference, so we should really bring it up here as well. Around the safe house, you'll find a number of documents. At first, it's not obvious what they're necessarily talking about, but any conspiracy minded player will put the pieces together pretty quick. Also, like you're still playing the Black Ops series, you better be conspiracy oriented because <laughs> a lot of stories depend on conspiracy stuff. Anyways, it's all referencing the Kennedy assassination and even the numbers you need to unlock the padlock is just the date of the Kennedy assassination. The reason all this is here is because the ending of the original Black Ops implied the main character was actually responsible for the murder, the whole plot of that game dealing with him being mind controlled by the Soviets. Obviously a huge conspiracy theory, even though a totally fake one, obviously, but still, this is Black Ops. These are just references, like nothing in the actual story of this game tells us one way or the other what actually happened. So all of them could basically just be a big, hey, remember this? Remember the Mason maybe killed Kennedy? Remember that? And number two are CAA documents referenced in the main menu. Yeah, even as something as basic as a menu has Easter eggs hidden in it. We got to credit the Redditor Nuror for finding this. They pretty much did all the light work on this one. Like you have to look very, very closely, but there's strings of numbers hidden in the background of various options on the menu. If you take those numbers and go to the CIA's website that contains declassified documents, you can find specific documents that are tangentially related to events referenced in the campaign. We've provided a link to the Reddit post below. It's a pretty deep dive into some interesting topics, but if you're curious about real life in the early 80s and spycraft, investigate it. It's definitely a thing. And finally, at number one, the looping mind hallway. All right, this is a bit of a stretch. Don't tell me I am the only one who thought this, though. I swear to God, there's no chance. Near the end of the game, Adler shoots you up with some psychedelic drug, and you find yourself in a trippy scenario where you're not really sure what's going on. 
Like these dream sequences has become a little bit of a staple of the Black Ops game, and this one does not disappoint. After a while, you find yourself in a constantly looping infinite hallway, and it feels like right out of PT, the infamous Silent Hills demo that was removed from the PlayStation Store. I mean, obviously PT didn't invent the horror trope of the looping hallway, but the way that the hallway is built and presented gives me serious PT vibes. And check out this section where you see Adler in the distance, but his head is shaking rapidly. Like, that's something right out of Jacob's Ladder, a movie that has been cited as a huge influence on the Silent Hill series. What we're seeing in Cold War and what happens in Jacob's Ladder are not actually that far off. In the movie, we follow a Vietnam veteran who's dealing with bizarre hallucinations, which he believes are caused by mind-bending government experiments. In Cold War, you're reliving a Vietnam scene while being experimented on by government agents. It's not one-to-one, -one, but there's definitely connections here. That is all for today, though. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to click the notification bell. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon the Hero, and we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.